All right, my boys, welcome to my first Locals. I guess it's a, it's a retrospective. I don't know what you might want to call this. But basically, this is your boy going back, thinking about his experience at Locals and round for round, kind of what we dealt with. And we kind of just take it from there, my boys. So if you already don't know, I've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel very recently. And previous to that, I've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links a lot, all in the effort to get back into the mainstream Yu-Gi-Oh game. And as you can see right here, someone said to me, uh, my boy, if you're trying to get a Dragoon, why don't you buy a case of those tins? Well, as you can clearly see, your boy's already been getting in there for game and clearly no Dragoon from tins or boxes. It's all garbage. So at this point, my. So at this point, my boy, we just decided to get in there. I just decided to go back into the game, um, full power Yu-Gi-Oh, um, leaving from Duel Links, leaving from Master Duel, and jumping back into the real world for the first time um, after doing some study, and I still made mistakes. <laughs> so, you know, it's nothing wrong with making mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes, and it's all, you know, fun in <laughs> love and war, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, Sometimes you're going to make a mistake here and there, and I goofed, and it actually cost me. But we're going to get to there later, my boy, but we're going to jump into it right now. So the first thing I'm going to say, this was a really fun event. Um, this was actually the Battle of Chaos. Um, what is this uh, called? Uh, preview or whatnot? They uh, pretty much was given a preview of the cards that you could get. And um, yeah, I did not know that, so... I kind of had to improvise. There was a lot of people coming in with like knowledge of what they were looking for in the packs. And I didn't really know what exactly was in these packs. I didn't do any research or anything. But when I opened up the packs and cracked the packs, you know, um, I do have somebody like that I recently just been working with and trading with and stuff like that. My boy Sam. Shout out to the boy Sam. He has been hooking me up with, you know, pretty much everything I need so far. Uh, but at this point, um, he was telling me there there's a few cards to look out for, a few cards he was looking out for, and I didn't really get anything. But there was a card that I could have used on Sam that if I had to put it in my deck, you know, spoiler alert for later on, I would have been able to beat Sam uh, in his duel or in the duel we had because, you know, I was rocking Super Poly and there's a monster in there that fuses with uh, monsters that have no effects and he was playing Tingy. So basically, um, I had a Super Poly extra deck, but based on what he had on the board, I could never pop my Super Poly, but I could have used it on his tokens and his tingy monster that was a non-effect monster so that was my first mistake i didn't realize that i could have added that card to my extra deck because we could have added any cards that we pulled from the packs to our decks and i made that first mistake my second mistake was um i goofed i had more than one tinky in my deck and i ended up drawing two tinky in one uh duel and I had it in the same turn. I used a twin twister to discard it. And I dropped the tinky. And then I played the tinky from my hand. And the guy was like, match loss immediately. Eat it. <laughs> yeah. So I took the match loss. With that being said, I just wanted to put it out there that, like, in hindsight, I see all these little small things that happen. Some stuff having to do with the tournament, some things having to do before the tournament, and some things even having to do with just rules of the game. But I did make some mistakes that definitely cost me as I duel. But without any further ado, let's talk about the match. So it was only four rounds. It wasn't a lot of people there. There were 17 people uh, in total. And, you know, your boy, uh, you know, was one of those 17. So um, I decided to get in there with the Gladiator Beast. Now, the build of the Gladiator Beast that I'm playing um, this time is pretty much very similar to the deck that I'm playing online. But it is missing um, Dragoon. I don't have Dragoon, so I can't make the Dragoon play. And then also it is um, 
leaning very heavily on that main phase two play because I don't have Dragoon and I don't have a very strong turn one uh, play with uh, sovereignty anymore because, you know, I'm not going to be able to play that in the TCG because that card has been banned. Uh, so going into that, you know, I knew that. So I wanted to still go second, um, still pretty strong, go second deck. I had a lot of things to like neutralize my opponent's board or negate their stuff and, and move forward. And that definitely helped me against these two players. So I end up playing against this same deck twice back to back called, uh, Floundries or Floundries monsters. And they, are this pretty normal summon heavy deck with um, a lot of different effects to float the cards in here and there. So they have a lot of different like weird abilities, but honestly, I will tell you my first round, I was able to 2-0 this deck and you know what I did. I hit him with the main phase two combo using Dragon S. And honestly, after executing the Gladiator V combo the first time, my opponent did not want to catch the Dragon S main phase two combo the second time. I just flashed the Dragon S for game and got the scoop. That was a good feeling to get that in person, my boy. And I want to just really shout it out, my boy, from the mountaintops, my boy. This was my first duel coming back to playing full power Yu-Gi-Oh after practicing and developing a brand new deck and hopping in there and winning that first duel 2-0 felt amazing to do with the flagship combo my boy so so I was super elated about that and then we moved on to the next opponent and they were playing the same deck with a few different um uh, variant cards, but there was this one card that I can't think of that I probably will just put up on the screen. But basically, this card said if you could discard this card from your hand, the whole turn, like everything's vanished. And, they, and it was a quick effect monster you could use in your opponent's turn. It was disgusting. So that card caught me up in both of those duels. Both uh, opponents played that card. Um, it was pretty. It was pretty tough. But same thing. I was able to go dragon ass main phase two combo and i will tell you that honestly my back row removal that i played to break eldritch's board so that i could get in there helped to break this deck's board as well because this deck played a, an enough back row that my twin twisters really hurt it and then also they played a lot of hand traps and i played around that as good as i could until i could get that shot off with the dragoness and then set up my combo but um, I would say, you know, again, this was another 2-0, but it wasn't like it was just like a like a like a knockdown drag out slaughter. It was more like a ding ding ding, like you know, a couple good hits here and there, and then I was able to pick up the speed and, and get advantage and then win. So, you know, it it was definitely two good games, but it was still, you know. It, it wasn't like 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 it was just a breeze. So so I was thinking like, okay, well, my next couple games are definitely going to be challenging. So here is where the shenanigans start. So my third game, I was playing against prank kids. And my opponent, um, this is where I got the game lost because of the tanky situation. But the only reason why, honestly, I kind of felt bad in the moment, I kind of felt like I should have really pressed the issue that we should just like move on since I was discarding this, the one Tinky for the, for a card effect, which got, you know, no effect. And then of course the other Tinky. Yeah. I mean, we could have definitely made some kind of arrangement. Oh, well, discard a card, put it around, whatever, which is fine. And I totally understand you should not do that, but the reality was I got clapped on the game loss and in the situation being clapped on that game loss, I was in an advantageous position to set up the dragon S to attack and get in there for game. Because at the time my opponent had invested a lot of cards into the prank kids combo. And pretty much I was able to destroy the fusion spell and destroy the field spell. And there was no other back row and no cards in hand. So I had a position where I was able to, you know, get my strike, but you know, took the game loss and I said, it is what it is. So I just let that roll. But then when we went into the next match, because I had to take the cards out and replace them with something in my side deck, which is per the rules, which, which is pretty cool, you know, rather than just taking a 
straight up disqualification. You get a game loss in exchange for a side deck, which is nice. If I didn't have a side deck, I guess it would have been a oof. But <laughs> but uh, exchanged with my side deck or whatever. And um, once I exchanged with my side, it kind of didn't matter because my cover had been blown. Like the deck I've been playing has been exposed. It was exposed that I play back row removal. Therefore, my opponent decided to side in at that moment against the entire deck by adding more removal. Uh, I'm sorry, not more removal, but adding more back row and adding, you know, uh, cards that negate effects. So, like Forbidden Droplet, for example, was the back row. So you see the droplet sitting in the back with the fusion spell now. So obviously, you don't have the same uh, targets for your for your back row destruction. Now you got to randomly pick one 50 50 shot. If it's going to be the fusion or not might be the droplet and it was the droplet. So I definitely noticed that because of that exchange that gave my opponent like a ton of advantage, not just advantage in terms of like what I was playing, but he got to see me play the deck a little bit and he got to know exactly what he could put in to help give himself more of an advantage. So like kind of starting that duel if if the odds of winning was equal at that point 80 percent chance that he was going to get the the full dub at that point so it was just really not much i could do there so i just lost that but definitely looking forward to run that back run those hands back next week i'm not even i'm not even playing i, I got to run that back next week now we're gonna talk about the last match. Now, this is what's crazy. At this point, I was um, two and one, and a lot of people were um, two and one. Well, no, no, I don't know if a lot of people were two and one, but I think maybe enough people were two and one. But I know that the match that I was playing against, which was against my boy Sam, uh, that match was for second place. And I didn't realize that match was for second place, but I'm playing against Sam. And basically, and and I didn't, I totally did not mention this to y'all, and I should have mentioned this earlier, but basically I was, I started off at the last table at like table eight. And by the end of the entire tournament, the final round, I was sitting at the top table at the number three spot. So definitely should have clued in, duh. You know, this is for number two, but I just didn't really think about it. I really just didn't think about it. But um, I was playing against Sam, and as we were kind of going back and forth, you know, Sam's deck was a little different. So I've never played Tingy before, and I didn't really know what to expect. But the thing about Sam's deck is that Tingy has a lot of room to play um, a lot of hand traps, and then also they have a lot of different effects happening in the grave and banished and da da da. So it was kind of hard to keep up with everything because I just really, this was my first experience with it. But also, um, all the hand traps that he was playing definitely worked my deck out. And I made a mistake. I made a classic blunder. So I made two mistakes against Sam. The first mistake I made against Sam was not putting in that card for my super poly target. I would have been able to steal a game from him uh, with the super poly. The second mistake I made against Sam was I got Dragonus up and I attacked. And because we had been doing a lot of exchange with hand traps and back and forth, and we had both run really low on resources. And we were kind of both, top, you know how you're top decking, but you got two, one or two cards in your hand. And it's just like things aren't synergizing as well. So we were doing that for about a turn or two. But I was able to pull up with Dragonus and get things going first. So I was at the advantage and technically of this stalemate, I was winning. And what happens is I get up Dragonus and I attack. He can't respond because, you know, you can't respond to Dragonus attacks. And then I got greedy. Like I always tell you, you never get greedy when you're trying to do the Gladiator Beast combo. I got greedy and I attacked his token. And his token died. And when his token died, he activated this effect of a card that had died like many turns ago that I just overlooked this like one line in its paragraph of text that just says if a monster dies that's a token or some bullshit uh summon this guy and blow up a card 
Like, I just didn't see that. It did a ton of other things, <laughs> but I just didn't see that. And that got me. So that actually took me off guard. That like, was like a Yu-Gi-Oh moment. Like, oh, I was like surprised. So, so, so he did get me with that. And that was just like, that like actually like broke my advantage. And then he was able to finish me and then win the second game. But the first game I know I could have stole with my Super Poly, but I didn't have that card that fused two non-effect monsters. And his whole deck was full of non-effect monsters. And he summoned many non-effect monsters while setting up his combo. <laughs> and he literally had a token and the link monster that's a non-effect monster that needs to be on the field to make the whole deck work. <laughs> I'm so disgusted that I didn't really just pick up on that and say, this could be a great super poly target. I should throw it in just on GP. Like that's what I should have did just because it was the rules of the day, but uh, hindsight's 2020 and that was still good games. And I definitely got clapped uh, by the 10 year deck. So I'll put it like this out of the four decks that I paid, the uh, Floundries deck, I was able to clap that deck twice 2-0 decisively. And then I had to play against the Prank Kids, which was a little contentious. But, yeah, I did end up getting clapped because not only um, did I uh, make the mistake and then I ended up getting the game loss, I was kind of already defeated at that point anyway because it was too much advantage given to my opponent. So, so it was a lot went into that. That was not just the duel, but that's still an L, so it is what it is. And then the Tenyi, I did lose to that because, honestly, I got outpaced by the hand traps, and I also got um, uh, clapped by uh, not, you know, thinking thinking full picture with that card in the Super Poly. So, yeah, my boys, this was my first week back actually playing. I came a few weeks prior to that and um, just was hanging out and watching and observing things and trading and things like that and get my cards up. But, you know, um, working on getting that Dragoon, I got some advice from some pretty good players there. And one of the things that I did pick up, a side note, was about playing uh, the Cyframe package. And I realized that I can play the Cyframe package in the Gladiator Beast, and it wouldn't be a hindrance in the deck. Because basically how it was explained to me was, I mean, like somebody literally explained to me how good the Cyframe package was, and I didn't really truly understand how good it was. And then I thought about ways that I could implement it into my deck. And then I thought about Lambda, and I just thought about the combos and all that stuff. So I was like, okay, I'm sold on the Cyframe package. So we're going to be testing that out on master duels my boys but yeah that's pretty much it um i hope that you guys enjoyed this type of video um as i continue to do this um i will be changing up the format but this is just kind of the first uh thing that i want to try so uh let me know if you like this type of video my boys and as always keep it dank Until Tell me cause I'm looking out for you this